and was always there, and was driving everybody home. I kind of like, where do you get the time to just sit and actually take out the pen and muse? And, and I've never, I've never witnessed Stephen writing. I've only ever witnessed him. He's only just sending me links to other poets or talking about this or shouting or laughing or it's a. When you read this poem that night, you know, it really, it really struck me, and and I really, my first thought was I really would love to put a melody to this, and I asked you for permission, and you said, "Yep, yeah, go ahead." And so uh, I've been yeah, trying. Good elves. <laughs> 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 So, I'm very, very, very grateful, so I am. Um, it's been a long time coming, this book. Uh, I feel like it's ready now. And um, some of the poems, maybe, are the poems of a, of a young poet, that perhaps, um, with what I've learned, nearly wouldn't have made it in there, but my, my heart was my head sometimes, and they felt, I felt they were important to get them in there. Um, but actually, really, what I want to say is, uh, this isn't about me. This is really about the power of art and how it can connect each other, us to each other, how it can heal us, how it can transcend what we do and what we create. And that's the most important thing that all of you can take away. Most of you probably know that already. Um, create 
creativity is saved in my life. It's changed my life. I've done a lot of things that I haven't enjoyed in my life. And I'm not prepared to do that anymore. Um, so the fact that you're here today, I'm very grateful because it helps me to continue on on this journey. And I might need your help again. I might need you at some point in time to give me a leg up and do something, you know. But what I promise you in return is that if I can help you in some way with your art or something, that I will do my best to reciprocate that. And the idea of community, particularly when you think what was going on with the road here recently, you know, the protests that we've had, it's so important. And that's another thing that poetry has given me. It's given me you, it's given me a sense of place and belonging and community. It's got me to see the world. And I'm so grateful for that gift. You have no idea, you know. I look around the room now, and I'm going to get into a golden terrifying <laughs> 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 I was actually watching the father's head to be Liars! <laughs> <laughs> if a party wants it enough, it? <laughs> you know, it really the, the the community is such an important thing um, with with the art and, and where it's taken me. And curiosity is a massive, massive driver for me you now. Um, I didn't expect when I wrote my first poem. Uh, I'm 36 now. My first poem was about 20 or 21. That I'd ever be here. And in a funny way, I didn't expect to be in here. Specifically, poetry Ireland, because I didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Uh, and I was against them in many ways, and as I matured, I could see the benefit and the wonderful stuff they do. Um, and yeah, so I'm very grateful to be here in poetry Ireland, um, surrounded by all of you members of the organisation. I've got loads of people to thank, and I'm definitely going to forget somebody. So if your nose is put out of joint, I'm sorry. It's not an intentional snub. Um, yeah, well, I mean, first off, thank you very much. My parents are here uh, this evening, and um, you know, I haven't always been an easy child, I suspect. <laughs> and I'm grateful for them putting up with me and for providing me with opportunities and um, just being kind. And I'm very, very, very grateful. Uh, I want to publicly there, but I'm very, very grateful for all you've done for me over the years, and I know it hasn't been easy, um, but thank you so, so much for that, um, you know, yeah, thanks. Um, Woo! I have in no particular order, but I'm obviously going to thank your parents first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Alan Hayes, who's the publisher. He's out there and he's going to try and plug a few books. Um, you know, thanks very much, Alan. Alan took me to America um, as part of the UNESCO trip to Iowa, the UNESCO City of Lustre, Iowa. And that's where we connected. And I remember going to a bookshop with him. And he was picking up all the books. And he was critiquing them. Like, and I don't look at books in that way. And I was like, I want you to publish my book. Because he was like, fucking spying. Well, not fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hurt, it's quite nice, you know, but it's, it's giving out the spines and, and the, the quality of the paper and all this, and this is going to fetishization of books, so I find that skill set on my side, because that's something that I lack, and I lack a sort of an idea sometimes of how to shape poems, maybe, or my, uh, not that it's a, it, my dyslexia in some ways is a hindrance, in other ways it helps me, uh, but he certainly helped a lot with the, with the proofreading of the book, um, and I know I've been a pain in the ass to deal with from time to time, Alan. Uh, as have you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got them here, we have, and I'm very grateful for the time and energy that you've given me, and I'm very grateful for the book, so thank you very much, Alan, for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Steve Simpson, I don't know what is Steve Simpson here? Uh, Steve Simpson is the artist who did the incredible artwork. Um, Steve's a sound guy, he's a lovely, lovely fella, and to met him at a, at a literary festival, which again goes to prove that when you're kind of bent around doing this art and party stuff, you meet somebody else, and you know, <laughs> they're, they're publishing, them, they're, they're doing the cover of your book, and he's a sound guy. Um, so I'm very grateful to Steve. Um, I'm very grateful to um, 
to, to Jerry Smith over here, and um, Jerry has been a great source of, uh, he's been a great guide, so he has. Um, he sat down, we had many a coffee, many a text, many a phone call, an email, and, and um, sometimes nearly what he didn't say was the important thing that I've noticed, you know. And the book wouldn't be the book it is if it wasn't for him and his guidance. And I'm very, very grateful to you, Jerry. You're a very quiet man, you're a very decent man, and you're a fine poet, and I'm so thankful for that support. So thank you very much, Jerry Smith. <laughs> Glenn's there, I know you Glenn, how are you? How are you? <laughs> he does a bit of music, he's uh, <laughs> got a few gigs coming up down, he's coming up on a few things Tuesday, I might come down and give you a leg out with that one, you know, um, so, no, nah, he's been, he's been sound, um, you know, it was actually Port Beach, you know, Lockham's Hotel, um, yeah, because I went down to meet my friend uh, Gary Dunn, he was playing with Mick Flannery, and your car broke down, and it was a chance meeting, yeah, and I had the little business card that I still have saying it was a Dubliner, was a writer, Dubliner writer, Chancer, and poet, yeah, yeah <laughs> Chancer, yeah. Um, but I've learned from Glenn um, and, and people um, like Glenn and artists. Artists that are great, do you know what distinguishes them? They're generous, you know? They really are just fucking generous people, and that's what I've learned is to try and be more generous with your art and with your time. And that's what he's taught me so much, and I'm very, very grateful for that, for that generosity and all spirit. Thank you. And your mass, then. My friend here, Enda, I was his best man when I was ready. And we thought, we're going on a journey. Uh, we're going to have 30 days in the UK and Ireland um, soon, uh, which I'm, I couldn't have thought of anybody that I'd rather go on that journey with than end it. Because we know each other so well, and I know that if I annoy him or vice versa, we can both tell each other to show and we won't be offended. I know I'll be gone through Devon and they'll start giving me a lecture on some sort of static white thing in the distance. Because <laughs> he's got a degree in geology, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> And even though a lot of it goes over my head, what, what I love about them is, and this is true of anybody, if you're fascinated in something and somebody tells you about that, it's fascinating to you. You know what I mean? Because he cares and he wants to impart that knowledge. And I'm has taught me a lot, not just about geology, <laughs> but about how to live and how to be a friend and how to be a, 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 your relationship with your, with your family and your partner. I love all that. I love watching that. I love being around. I love the fact we made an album together just for saying it there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we've done that and we've more adventures to come and I'm very grateful that you're in my life. And we're going to hear a couple of songs from Enda later on as well. And I'm not going on too much now, I'll show you. Oh, no, 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 no. At least you start sitting down. <laughs> um, right, so we found Linda Devon over there, this fucking sound. And um, she's been like, not just a friend, but a person that I work professionally in many ways. Uh, so I've known about 15 years. Um, I know you're a beautiful child room and who we've had the crack with many a time. Um, and she, she actually, uh, thanks to the book design, Linda did the original book design. Uh, <laughs> she says my name. She's put up on the Instagram right a while ago, and thanks for doing this, and we're doing this, and I didn't quite make it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, to, 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 like, it was probably more than to me. Like, yeah. And it was. It was. It was. <laughs> oh, you're I wasn't. I, I've changed and. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks, Linda. You're right. I think we found Simon's over here. Simon Daniels. Simon Daniels um, has made some videos for me. He made um, a really important one and he took a chance on me. Um, so, like, the reason why I'm here, which is a bit bizarre, in that, you know, I have got a book and I've been kind of working, uh, working, whatever, gigging, and this has been my job for a while. Um, a large part of that is because Simon took a chance and made a video for me a few years back in a boxing ring in the national, uh, in the national arena. And he didn't have to do that. He did that for free and it went well, thankfully. And we made another thing, and we've won some awards with the videos. We've done other bigger projects, 
text and he's done stuff also for Ian S when he's filmed with other poets, which has been a lovely thing that we've been able to try and elevate other voices. But the most important thing that we've really had is a, is a video that he made um, called The Gardener, which is a poem from my mother, and, um, and, 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 and um, sorry Simon, so right, his mother's in that video, and his mother passed away, and I loved that video so much, and I was very grateful to have met her mother, and my friends, uh, she was fucking sound, and I'm so grateful that she let me in her house, and you let me into your life, and that transformed and transcended my art, and to connect with other people, and that wouldn't have happened without you and your generosity again. So thanks so much for that song. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Yeah, so uh, with that Royal Joy thing, I'll, I'll be doing a bit of a tour at the Great Hotel in London, London Lodge as well, in the Embassy, um, in the weeks. If you know people in London, come around, tell them please, you know. Um, there's a few people like that that have taught me uh, a bit about myself this year. One was a young boy called Sean um, in a school in Port Leash, and he wrote a beautiful, beautiful poem in one of my classes, and I think about that poem a lot. In fact, I said that poem yesterday for me, as it happens. I was asked to speak on behalf of other artists who work with communities. And that was, that was for me, like, look, this is what happens when you put artists in communities. They create art with 15 year old kids that fucking communicate with their parents. Like, get other poets out there and do that. And that's what they're saying to me yesterday. Um, and I love that poem, and I think about it all the time. And I think about another person all the time who a lot of us know here, a young man called Paul Curran, who passed away this year by his own hands, and that fucking hurt me and hurt so many people so much. And he has a line in one of his poems that says, The art that never gets made. And that goes in my head all the time, all the time. And I be lazy and I don't work hard enough. There's loads of things, and then I that. Like, unfortunately, some of my friends have passed away from that. And it was the first person that did it who was younger than me. And it really affected me. It really, really affected me to think of Paul. And I would ask you to go onto YouTube and to look up at his poem Drive and look up his band and to spread his art. But with, with that message of the art that never gets made, make your own, create. You know, it's, what are you, what are you living for? You know, if you're not creating and sharing and connecting. Do that for him. Um, so I'm going to say a poem that nobody's heard. Um, well, Leo's heard. It's not in the book, and I'm sorry, Adam, I'm going to, the first poem I'm going to say is not in the book, but it'll be my second book. Um, <laughs> it's just a message I want to kind of start with, and maybe I'll do. How's everybody doing? We okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you have not sore arses or whatever. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I was, I was asked about a poem. Most of this is an Iambic pentameter or, or like a particular meter. And then I got a bit lazy and I just decided. <laughs> it's called uh, We Must Create. And um, yeah, it goes like this. Okay, I saw me too. <laughs> Create to know who we can be. I say this for you, I say this for me. We must create to know who we can be. Early beginnings, heartbeat, warmth, and you. First breath, eyes open, a new point of view. Hands touch, ears hear, clock stick, and I am who we must create to know who we can be. Screaming out from within with the voice here, a note flowing on air, love in the fear, melody all around this atmosphere. We must create to know who we can be. Here in truth, in onomatopoeia, boom boom bell zooms up playing with grandpa while Foki cutting bacon for grandpa, we must create to know who we can be. From scrolling with crayons, Lego bricks, from knitting needle saw textile fabrics, to air guitar and Emma Jimi Hendrix, we must create to know who we can be. There are creative accountants, CVs, Tinder profiles where you look the bees knees, but that's not the force, it comes with ease, we must create to know who we can be. We heard a song sung, it helped ease the pain. We didn't feel so lonesome as we sang the refrain. We forgot that feeling until we heard it again. We must create to know who we can be. From nursery rhymes to white collar crimes, what have you to say in uncertain times? Having the chance to change the paradigms, we must create to know who we can be. Do you remember the time you heard an opening, a let go, or when that beat dropped and how it made your head go? Some things make no sense unless you're in flow. We must create to know who we can be. You may rise then fall, or fall then rise. An art of a story contains no surprise, but how you tell it there in the art lies. We must create to know who we can be. If you do it for the money, you'll be called a fraud. If you think you're great company and you might be God, delusions of grandeur aren't that odd. We must create to know who we can be. There's all sorts of forms, disciplines, levels, to challenge yourself in the intervals, we'll find rivals and reasons for approvals. 
we must create to know who we can be. If it saved you from yourself, and now there's no other way, it doesn't matter how it moves you. Welcome to the ballet. <coughs> you just found the beat of Parnassus. Fair play. We must create to know who we can be. We say this for you. We say this for me. We must create to know who we can be. We must create to know who we can be. Woo! Gardner. child and broken marriage, all of this, and I don't know how to speak to her. I always want to hold her. I don't know how. So a veil kiss lays for courtesy will do. She's been learning to stop living inside her own head. Gets up, goes out, path to battle. No panic attacks for a while, still manic, but calmer now, still pretending, so xenophobic. Marbles down cultures of dreams. Behind her, it's fresher though. Built up over years of false dawns and mistrust, reduced expectations, frustrations, what's intended now? Quiet. Yes, quiet. Peace. Or perhaps bird song in her garden. Where she will grow. Apples, pears, spools, 
raspberries, strawberries, and gooseberries. Watch them bloom again and return to the soil, but not before she has lived a life deserving. And when they tell me today, she pretends to be happy. What do you say to that? Let's watch her flower now. I say, I'll bring her some water. Right. 
Hunt the hare and thunder down the rocky road, and all the way to Dublin I walk the lovely land. Hunt the hare and thunder down the rocky road, and all the way to Dublin I walk. Dublin, you always felt pain to cherish all Dublin. 
you know, panties or like cable street compromising any paper feet, Dublin, Jailward, awkward. Dublin. You're more than a second of the paddle. In Dublin, what's a paddle paddle shunt? Why don't you just admit it, Dublin? It brought back Sam again. Where did you go from the cash of the actual exchange and go for cash, Dublin? Dublin, Abraham, Bali Al Hathia. And a hundred nations of their tongues, your citizens are using the name, so gave me the fortune to all. Dublin where the power is held by too few in the fall. Dublin when will you revolt again? 1988 wasn't your true millennium, that's why the 50 feeds and milk back in Dublin are mine. But I'm happy to share you, Dublin. From RTE, TCD, UCT, U262, AFSC, and Apollonia's Temple Bar, STDs. Oh, these. Oh, these. Oh, these. Oh, MGs. No longer the second city. Yeah, you play second fiddle to Google and Guinness to Facebook and on social to it's Dublin. Look at yourself. Your terror box and tenements are an excuse for a solution. Look at where they tell you. You're more than rap a third person. Banjax bells use an alright story. But yes, you're the top. But Jay's not scully. A boy go by. You're the soil and the lawyer. Dublin, my fight for you, Dublin. You're a tough bastard. Yeah, you're full of the soft and small people on your streets. Margaret Dawn dancing on O'Connell Street. The dice man found the guilty wine on Grattan Street. Pat Inglesby. His palms of us, more than three in our bodies. Alone, boy, was in bloom. The day he saw these sandy mountains in the gospel, Kelly, Drew, McKenna, and Sheen, the force of boys at Brendan being the glance of rejoicing and never looked out to see. Snow falling slowly on the dead in glass, never in them and were kept in one strolling to Christy Brown, milky controlling the foot to paint pictures of palms to your heroines. Brendan Frigger, the city's mother. And Maureen O'Hara then chanting with the Dublin who are boom and bust, running wild and swift. Dublin, can I trust you? Dublin, your true blue is Harry Clark's cobalt. Dublin, for a bit busy, dicey, you want to go floozy, Mr. Cusy, God fear him. Dublin, shooting down for Annika Gear, and Dublin, your bang bang. Forty coats, Zosimus, a blind tree, Paul. Dublin, you were all of us. And all of them yet to come. Because that's what the brave people have upon Dublin. Remember Stardust and all your waltzing lovers. Big Jim's arms are outstretched for risen people get armed and they'll come again in Dublin. Your GPO columns are scarred with the crackle of gunshots, Dublin. Your CCTV will never yield your.